Welcome to Meet the Press. Now I'm Ryan Nobles in for Kristen Welker on another remarkable day here in Washington as a federal judge has just scheduled one of the most important trials in our democracy's history alongside one of the most important days on next year's presidential calendar. Following a contentious hearing between federal prosecutors and Donald Trump's attorneys, Judge Tanya Chutkin ruled that the former president will stand trial on March 4th of next year to face criminal charges that he orchestrated a conspiracy to overturn the 2020 election. So here it is, folks. Look at this. The current legal calendar facing the Republican frontrunner with today's trial date now the third confirmed criminal trial set to begin in 2024. Tangled between the start of the Republican presidential primary in Iowa and the Republican convention ahead of Election Day, not only that, but today's news puts the start of Trump's election interference trial on the eve of Super Tuesday, which is typically the single biggest day of the nominating contest. Now, we should note that Judge Chutkin made her ruling after a hearing in which Trump attorney John Loro accused special counsel Jack Smith's prosecutors of seeking what he called a show trial while insisting that Trump's attorneys won't have enough time to prepare. All of this playing out amid another key legal hearing tied to the criminal case of election interference in Georgia, as Mr. Trump's former White House chief of staff and co-defendant Mark Meadows testified in court as he tries to move his case out of Fulton County to federal court. For more now, I'm joined by NBC News Justice and Intelligence correspondent Ken Delanian, NBC News correspondent Blaine Alexander in Atlanta, and Tim Hempe, the former U.S. attorney who served, of course, as the lead investigator for the January 6th Select Committee. So, Ken, let's start with you. How the heck is all of this going to work? How are they going to schedule all of this and make it happen? Well, first of all, Ryan, it's important to note that this date is not set in stone. There, there, there's every reason to believe there will be additional delays, but it's deeply significant that the judge ruled that essentially this trial is going to happen at some point before the election and maybe even before the Republicans uh, reach a decision on a nominee, which is huge. And, and the judge reached that decision by having very little patience for the arguments from Donald Trump's defense team today that, look, there's just so much discovery, so many documents we have to go through that we need two years to prepare. So their, their proposal of April 2026 was a non-starter mm -hmm. for Judge Tanya Chuck. And she said that right away. And she begged them essentially to offer a more reasonable alternative. And they just refused to do it. And so what she ended up with was a date that was really just two months distant from the January proposal of Jackson. And you mentioned this could still get pushed back a little bit more. But by setting a marker uh, in March, is she actually probably zeroing in on maybe May or June for the actual start of this trial? Your guess is as good as, uh, as mine on that. But, you know, for example, there are things that can delay it. Like uh, Trump attorney John Loro today said that he was going to argue and make a motion that Donald Trump uh, was, is immune f through presidential immunity from these criminal charges. That's the kind of thing that could be appealed all the way up to the Supreme Court before there is a trial. Mm -hmm. So that's going to take some time. That could delay things. There are other issues that could delay things. And so, um, you know, we don't really know when this is going to go to trial. But on this timetable, it seems likely that it would be at least before the November 2024. Election. So was this decision then a victory for the special counsel? Oh, uh, absolutely. Absolutely. 100%. Explain why. Because the judge really adopted their view of the case, which is that, you know, uh, that there is a reasonable time frame here for the defense to get ready. That's not two years and that they don't need to actually read, you know, 12.8 million document pages of documents mm -hmm. that have been turned over. You know, we live in an electronic age that can do keyword searches. Um, and she also made it very clear in a number of occasions inside the courtroom that she's going to treat Donald Trump like any other defendant. He doesn't get any special deference because he's running for president. In fact, he's like any other prominent defendant, a CEO or someone with a busy schedule. He's going to have to adjust his schedule to meet her schedule. Mm -hmm. And she also said that she had communicated with the judge in New York about, uh, you know, deconflicting because he's also set a trial date for March. And, mm -hmm. and it sounds like they're going to work that out. I mean, your, your point that he's not going to be treated any differently than any other defendant was definitely a point she made. But she did make note of the fact that he has all these other legal issues. You, you uh, mentioned the situation in Manhattan. Is, is she going to take into account all the other things that he's dealing with as well in terms of his legal problems and other courtrooms he may need to sit in? She will, but it seems like she's got first position now. Mm -hmm. She's kind of out ahead of the other judges in terms of setting this early trial date. And a lot of legal experts believe that this is the case most likely to go to trial 
uh, first. You know, we're, we're all focusing on the Atlanta case because that just happened. Right. That's a complex case with a lot of defendants and a lot of room for delays, and it's a state prosecutor who has a history of having trouble picking a jury in a racketeering case. So I'm not confident that that case, for example, would, would go ahead of this very similar case in Washington. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.